So we said, let's do something together. Great. No problem doing that. That would be good. Do some kind of joint business. Uh, the weather is getting warmer. What about a lemonade stand? Right. That's good because you get like, I guess you get the juice from the lemons or the, the ice or whatever, some cups and, uh, you know, you make a profit, you sell, you sell it and you make a profit. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and we are fortunate enough to have uh, yet another MVP guest on. Uh, Andy Jones is joining us on the podcast today, and we had just a great conversation about everything from SCCM migration to Intune and talking about uh community content and inspiration for creating automated solutions and just just a great conversation overall so i I think you're gonna really enjoy it i don't even drink lemonade all right i drink coffee I will not be in Paris next week, maybe the week after. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, Andy Jones, I, I work for a company in the UK called British Telecom, Telecom's company. Have done for a good part of my life, really, uh, and uh, moved around quite a bit from a technology perspective, mainly Microsoft focus, but generally worked in this consultancy area for kind of Microsoft cloud in the last six, seven years, probably, um, focus really on device management. So SSCM, but I like to do Intune. I don't like the SSCM tie of things, if I'm honest. Um, try to steer customers away from it. Although there's a, there's a few out there that are still, still hanging on. Yeah. That's been my struggle for, uh, you know, I told folks to do a main join in 20, as soon as windows 10 came out. So it was like 2016, and uh, it was not a good time for that, but that was the first thing. And uh, I realized how much people cling to SCCM, especially you get, I would get SCCM ad- admins, SCCM admins who would say to me, I have, let me explain my setup. It's a great distribution setup. I'm like, oh no, we're not going to have, we're not about to have a very good conversation. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I don't know. So at this point, based on what you said, I mean, my thought is that Intune is a suitable replacement for it i i totally think i mean there is it's gradually got there right and i did there's been points along the way where i thought mm, well what, what's going to happen if the economy starts faltering in some way are microsoft going to pull a bit of investment in this area because i know in the uk i've done a bit of work with you know microsoft in the uk and they got rid of uh, a number of kind of Intune related consultants and product managers, right, in the last year or so. Um, and a few of which have, you know, gone to some good companies. But I, I did wonder whether that was a sign in some way. But they seem to be piling a lot of investment in, and that's a, that's a good sign. And you know, you just got to see the amount of people that are going to some of these you know, face-to-face sessions and Microsoft are always there. They're always trying to promote themselves and be part of that, which is all part of the MVP community, I suppose. But yeah, I, I see good things now that, you know, they've really shoved a lot of dollars into the Mac side of things as well. I think that's probably brought a hell of a lot of people in um, and probably bolstered, you know, the product a lot um there's been a number of things that have kind of held it up along the way right gpos and that kind of thing i mean you you're you're what what sort of size companies do you work for is it and and what what's your common kind of troubleshooting issues yeah so for me it's uh i I started backwards i I, the first project i did was a fifty thousand employee pharmaceutical company and uh this was 2017 so it was a really not mature um so i was uh and this was actually right before the intune management extension so what they called sidecar was us using blob storage to deploy powershell scripts to grab the bits to do exes we used powershell for everything once they let us do powershell i only had it was just Mm -hmm. me and a colleague at the time and uh uh we scripted everything gpos uh you know, try to do sequences for app stuff with auto. I mean, anything we could do. And the problem there was reporting. 
Um, but now it's all sizes, right? The largest organizations I worked with are global, right? 120,000 okay. seats, um, yeah. some small ones. Sometimes the bigger ones are easier, but yeah, it, it's, I, I would say it's the habit. It's not even the technology. It's the, it, it, the, the amount of technology troubleshooting issues I run into are so small compared to folks just clinging to, well, no, we do group policy for that. It's like, okay, but you don't want to do yeah. a policy. You're trying to achieve something. What are you trying to yeah, achieve? Yeah. And they, yeah. uh, the domain, I mean, you probably get that too. And when you tell someone they don't need to domain join a device, they get, you know, mm -hmm. so I've always done it, <laughs> you know, type of thing. Yeah. I, you know, I guess, I mean, my background historically, I started off in the development world, um, did a lot of web websites, did a number of, you know, um trans you know in in intranet type things uh for the company uh introduce services that way and try to sell it but if i'm honest of late i kind of lost traction with a that a lot of that and, and I'm, i've become a little bit lazy so when i see when i see the sort of stuff that you're doing right you know some of the powershell stuff i kind of think i really really need to dive into that more um but something's holding me back that's probably what you saw. I know you saw the kind of power automate stuff that yeah. I do. I, I, I mean that area. By the way, the kind of automation of, you know, data and using tools to do it really, really kind of interests me because I, I started. I, I had a customer who approached me and said, "Look, we've really got an issue with our onboarding, right? We know about Intune." Intune's going to do the device thing, but there's a lot of stuff that comes in be before that. So that that's kind of what got me interested. And I thought, well, what's possible here? So from a HR perspective, I started looking at it. And then I, I fathomed that there was a lot of material out there that kind of looked at this before, but didn't really wrap it all together. So, yeah, I'm going off topic a bit, but, no, you know, that's good. <laughs> um, it's... Um, I, I like the solution, yeah, and I guess that's probably why I work with a lot of solution architects, I suppose. But yeah, I like to look at the solution, and then right now, I think Intune has become a mainstay, right? It's what what's what's the the, the stats now? Something like two thirds on Intune rather than SSCM. Yeah, it's gotten there for sure. Yeah, it's got to be up around that, right? Hence, a lot of why the a lot of the investment goes into that side of things, but uh, yeah, automation, making things easier for the customer, repeatable is you know the way to go in it. Which why you know, one of the things reasons why I kind of hooked up on some of the stuff that you were doing initially, I found that really interesting. So uh, yeah, great job you've done there. Thanks. Yeah, I, you said the solution. I think that's the best part. Intune sometimes feels like a blank canvas. I almost like it when. I talk to Microsoft and they say, well, well we don't do this thing. And I say, oh yeah, like that, that's, uh, that's, and that's where the migration came from. A customer wanted it and Microsoft said, you have to wipe the device. And they said, we don't want to. And then they went to me yeah. and said, what do you think? I said, I don't know. And uh, yeah. I was showing someone yesterday and we went through the arc, we went through it backwards. I usually I show people the end user experience and it's so simple and magical. And um, then we get into it and setting it up. But we did this backwards and, and these were some smart folks, security minded folks who appreciated the work into it. And they said, this is a convoluted, messy solution and we love it. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, look, as long as if I can use, they have so many, I mean, the graph is a game changer. I think the graph gives us something, yeah. you know, uh, like, like the onboarding you're talking about. I know folks try to do that with, um, you know, maybe some of the built in entry stuff, but it's kind of limited to what HR platforms it supports and what you can do. I don't yeah. think it's a, it's a silver bullet. So like you said, yeah, I mean, it, if you can bring it all together, right, then it, it makes sense. I was, I guess all I'm doing is I'm dabbling at the edges if you if I'm honest, but cause I'm never going to do that as a day job, but, um, it was just kind of a bit of an experiment for me because of this customer come up with it. And there's a lot of people that out there that aren't using fully fledged HR solutions. Right. Yeah. So, Correct. so I started going down the route of, well, what do these HR solutions work day or, you know, well, what do they provide you with from from an automation point of right. view 
And there's a huge difference on what they do and what they don't provide in terms of creating you your user account, putting all assignments out for certain tasks and all of that. There's a big difference on what they what they will and what they won't do. Uh, so yeah, that intrigued me really. So, uh, but yeah, again, thinking about the whole tenant to tenant move, you know, and I know you spoke in a blog before with Andy about you know just setting up the tenant yeah um the big thing for me at the moment i'm i'm trying to do and i'm thinking about producing stuff myself to help myself get back into the scripting and stuff yeah. is is the kind of just move from on domain over to intune intune cloud native because yeah. there's still a gap there right it, it definitely needs to be there we i there's been situations where i've bent my tool to do it um but honestly, it could probably be done, but that's not its intent. And people are using it for that, and I'm all for yeah. people bending tools. But yeah, I, I think a smooth way to do that, I think there's a massive need because, you know, folks, uh, they, they don't seem content with hybrid joining existing and net new autopilot. They seem to want to make the move, which I didn't see for the last few years, but now I get that ask all the time. Um, yeah. Yeah, there, there's opportunity there. Yeah. Um, and I like what you said, you know, I, I think too many folks in our industry get tied up in being an expert on a tool and delivering a tool as opposed to what does the customer want? What solutions do they yeah, yeah. want? And that's where, like you said, that's where you want to be. And that's where I yeah. want to be, too, is seeing I'm not, you know, I don't want to necessarily be tied down. I do a lot of Microsoft and Intune stuff. But what do you need? Because if you need yeah. it and then other folks need it, now it's a trend. Yeah. And that's that's the best place to be, I think. Um, well, it's, it's about solving customer issues, problems, right? A business creating a, a, a almost creating a strategy, right? Yes. So of and, I, and if I'm honest, I see we're guilty of it in the technical communities whereby we want to fix things instantly with a script. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've got a problem. I'll do a script for you. But actually, sometimes that's just a, a plaster over something that's right. It's not looking at the whole issue. Yeah. You know, you've got your business led people that want to look at the whole what is the process underneath? What's it going to give me in a big company rather than just, you know, solve a few issues that a few end users might have. And so that's that that intrigues me. And I think um, I personally think that's where the whole Intune thing's going to go, yeah. right? Because, and I do think ultimately that Microsoft will bring out a solution for tenant to tenant, mm -hmm. you know, domain. They've got, they've got to do a, a domain to, to Intune migration. They have, it, there's, <laughs> they have to, yeah. you know, it, it's just, it's just going to be pressure that comes in a bit like, you know, application packaging, right? All right. So they'll, they'll slap a fee on top and introduce a new license of some kind, but still, you know, it's got to be done because there's a huge gap there and a lot of people want it. And that's, that shows the maturity of how many people are now using their tool set, mm -hmm. right? Because it used to be people dabbled. They wanted to kind of have a, have a, you know a pilot or whatever and that's the, a couple of years ago there were the discussions i were having with customers well what's in tune about and what can i do with it do you want to have a pilot of it we can set it up very you know vaguely you can play around with it and see if it works and now that's no 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 we've we used we use it for our mobile estate right that's yeah. the entry point yeah. What about your windows? Oh, we use it, but we want to know more and we don't have the resources really to to kind of do it on a day to day basis and support it. So how can you help us there? It's matured to that point where it's a mainstay in in the in, you know, people's environments now. So yeah. you've got to build on top of that and do it's about the integration and broadening that out to the business solution. I'm, I'm going a lot, but I've, I feel a bit passionate about that. No, that, that's good. And, and people always say, because I sometimes, uh, I go, I've been going off on a tangent. It's been 12 years now. So I, I, I've been off topic for 12 years from what I was doing originally. <laughs> so that's where the stuff comes from. No, you, you're right. I mean, essentially, and I think that's the problem, right? Mobile's the entry point. And then 
I think folks have a hard time saying, okay, well, I can't possibly do Windows like that because Windows is heavy. Windows is domain yeah. and policy and mapping and, but two things. One is, yeah, you need someone very familiar with Intune and Endpoint Management to help take you there. But I think it's mindset too. It's like, well, why are we treating PCs like that? Because in a modern, you know, hate to say zero trust, but in a zero trust modern architecture, yeah. Windows is just like the phone. It's another yeah. thing you're accessing resources on. Yeah. Don't, don't That's what it comes down it. to. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Exactly. And I, and I do think the whole mobile entry point is a good one, I'm particularly in my area, because my company own, you know, the biggest mobile company in, well, certainly in the UK, EE. Okay. Um, and I get quite a few customers from that area. People wanted to just, you know, at least manage their mobile estate. And then they, when they see what benefit they can have from using those licenses, they say, hang on a sec, we're using some other tool for our windows. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, you know, again, that's another way of introducing people and kind of rationalizing your, your, your training and, and your resource that are supporting it. So um, there's a lot of angles that, that really you know, beneficial for using the product. I, I love it. I, I, I like it. I, I like know. it. It's yeah. I was on a call this. I, I was talking to my, I was on a call with Microsoft and we were discussing the Intune suite this morning. Um, cause I did a bunch okay. of videos on it and, uh, you know, we we're just talking about like customer feedback. It's like, yeah, customers don't like the price of the Intune suite saying, but I mean, I think it's how we, it's how we look at it. And look, ultimately, Microsoft, like I said, they're trying to solve these problems. App patching for third party, mm -hmm. they're going to do that in house. Right now, Patch My PC yeah. has a bigger catalog. And I, I like Patch My PC, but trust me, yeah. when I could do it in Intune natively, I'm going to do it in Intune. Uh, yeah. Folks don't like a lot of tools. Um, consolidation is better if you yeah. can. So that, to me, the cloud PKI has been, that's been my favorite. Um, <laughs> oh, it's, it's, a, it's a game changer, right? It is. It, it is a game changer. And they asked this question last year at um, MVP Summit mm -hmm. about, you know, what, what, where, where's your focus? Where do you think it's going to be a real change in the industry from an Intune perspective? And, you know, how number of people that put their hands up to Cloud PKI was, was, was you know, quite big. Um, yeah, it's, it's how you position, right? The Intune suite, for sure. Um, someone said at an event uh, with our first event in the UK, mm -hmm. they were kind of, people were saying, look, how can Microsoft justify this? Um, but someone quite rightly said, well, you know what, let's think about this, right? Yeah. Let's, let's not be emotional about it and I actually understand what it means. If you're getting rid of your infrastructure, right, for your PKI, if you're not having to use third party tool licensing and all of that assigned with your apps packaging. If you can do all the things like analyze all and query all your data from your users and all of that, Privilege these are all things right? that people want, yeah. right? But you're paying extra for at the moment. Yeah. If you rationalize, like you say, all of that down, what are you saving? Right? I mean, people aren't doing the exercise to understand what no. they're saving, but if they did, then maybe they'll be surprised. I think it's kind of hip right now. It's, I mean, it's always hip to hate Microsoft. There's, oh, it's, it's like anything else, right? Everyone hates Google and everyone hates Microsoft. And, uh, you know, business runs on Microsoft, so I don't think it kind of matters. But I, I guess it's cool. And, oh, more add-ons from Microsoft. And, you know, like you said, don't be emotional about it. Because I've said that. I say, look, because for me, the Cloud PKI, the Endpoint Privilege Management, which is so well integrated, I think if you were to take that, if you were to take that, the uh, the app management, the cloud PKI. Even if you took just those three products and broke them up, yeah. that's you know that cost for that tool minus having to integrate other tools, keep servers running. Just like you said, there's more than the license cost. So I, I think it'll I think it'll get there. I don't see how people cannot um, see that. So no, yeah, it's logical um, for sure. So let let me ask you a question, yeah. uh, Stephen. Right. Your tool, your migration tool. Yeah. Where's that going? Because <laughs> you could, because you could go. You know, there are there are one or two products out there that yeah. 
you know, are doing, say, similar things and all that. But you I've built this from scratch. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I've um, seen the few that did it. In fact, there's one, I forget which one, one company took my code directly and tried to integrate it, not on their US site, but they like missed some of it and it didn't work. I, I guess, and the reason I made it open source is because, um, you know, A, I, I want the adoption. And for something like this, um, you know, the, the it, it really can only be fine through working with customers, right? Because yeah. there's so many unknowns and I've gotten burned. I've walked into situations where, um, you know, it seemed like it would be a good fit, but the customer didn't know about the tenant they were acquiring or there was you yeah. know so, so many things and it evolved because of that but i don't know where it's going to go it's at the point now where um it's finally i think we reached uh over ten thousand devices migrated with it successfully um wow. and the community has been great the discord you know shout out to uh my friend lisa and colleague for telling me you should make it well she made the discord but it's yeah. been uh, it's been good. So I don't know. Eventually, if it can get to a place where uh, I've been working with uh, some devs on my team to give it a front end and maybe make it where it's more yeah. streamlined, um, I think it'll get there. I think it just has to have parameters. I have to figure out what I will do and what I won't do. I know right yeah. now some folks in the community are testing it with GCC High to commercial. Okay. And they asked me, well, how does it work? I said, I don't know. <laughs> so <yeah. they've> been <laughs> yeah. modifying it. And if it works, great. So, yeah, I think it has to grow. Um, I, I want it to be very valuable. I want it to save people time and have a good user experience. Um, okay, yeah. and that has, to, it has to, it has to be good enough user experience to put up with all the crap setting it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But yeah. you know, the fact that you're getting a good traction with the community and people yeah. using it, right. That in itself will help it grow. You know, it's a bit, it's almost, it's almost like using the Microsoft MVP model right what's good what's bad you know help me do this and yeah i don't know it's got legs as far as i can see i think it's great it's great what you've done Thank right you. and um take it take it to the take it to the hills and uh see I'm what you try. can do with it yeah i'm gonna see yeah. there's some sessions submitted i'd like to speak about it um we'll see if the mvp thing works although if they let me in i don't know what that'll say about the mvp community but uh, <laughs> it's, uh no be, i, I it, <laughs> it's, it's a done deal <laughs> <laughs> it'll it'll be cool but um yeah i think uh yeah i just want people to use it so I, i'm excited to see how it grows and obviously i'm always working on it and uh yeah it's cool when people use your you know your stuff and uh it's made me better i'm not that good at scripting and coding um that's my no. I mean, I, I just, I keep doing it. It's like video editing. I'm not good at that either, but I just keep doing it. So. No, you got a good, you got a good style there and it's working for you. So you keep yeah. going. Cool. Cool. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's all positive from what I can see. So well done. Yeah. Um, can, let me ask you another yeah. question then. So out of that whole migration piece, yeah. what's the trickiest bit that it's been difficult to capture the, you know, the data, migrate it over, clean it up, all of that. I mean, because I'm, I'm I'm finding the whole user profile side of things tricky. That was the hardest part. When I moved was the it? devices the first time for the customer, all I did was move the device. It was gone from tenant A, it was in tenant yeah. B, and I said, I'm done. And uh, I yeah. was so impressed with myself that I moved it. I didn't think... <laughs> Like then someone said to me, you know, there's two profiles on the device now, though. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. like it took so much work to figure out how to use the token the right way to. So the first pass we did was we actually migrated the data over. Yeah, that was terrible. That was so was such it? a bad idea I had. And I thought it was good. It was I was moving it to like a staging area. Then I would try moving it to Azure. Then I tried copying it over to. Re and then a, a Discord community member said, have you seen the invoke sim method where you can change the profile owner to a new SID? I said, okay. no, I never thought to do that. So I went back to the drawing board. My team was like, please don't change this thing anymore. <laughs> they got, um, but that's, that was the ultimate thing was basically, uh, having a small, uh, limbo area where after the device moves to the new tenant, they sign in once, with their new credentials and then we reboot and lock them out so that we can yeah. keep the old profile with all the old data 
and delete the new one they just created, but take that sim and change the yeah. owner of the old profile to the new SID, do some cleanup in the registry, and that's what made it finally viable. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was the hardest what, part. What, what, what are the implications? I mean, yeah. you inform me here. What are the implications, would you say, of having two profiles on the device, apart from its unused data? I think it's the space. I think it's also, I think it'll, you know, depending how far a user would make it, I think it would ultimately be confusing. Um, okay. And I think it is the data, right? Because, you know, the Microsoft answer is OneDrive. Because if you assume I'm using OneDrive yeah. and 10 and A and B, but the biggest challenge was no one seemed to care about that. They cared about what was in app data, app data local, okay. app data roaming. And that was the challenging part. Um, and uh, now, the again, this all assumes, this is device migration. So the assumptions are someone has migrated the identity and the mailbox and the teams and the, and there's plenty of people doing that and plenty of tools yeah. doing that. And I don't play in that space. I'd break it. Um, so assuming that's done, it really was just about the local data. So yeah, no one seems to yeah. like the two profiles. I mean, we had iterations where you could delete the old one after, but this simplified everything to where it's just one okay. profile. Yeah. Did you want to talk about any like events you got coming up or anywhere to speak or? Do I think um, generally speaking, this Workplace Ninja stuff is, is taking off. It seems to be there was a gap in the UK for it. You know, Workplace Ninjas gave us a kind of trade, not um, a badge, an icon in order yeah. to kind of attract people. And uh, we've got our next session in July. Um, tickets aren't quite out yet for it, but they will be soon. And um, it, it's a different format. To me, this is like one of the attractions. So we, we're hiring a, a, a cinema, right? You know, a, a nice cinema. It's yeah. not just your, your average you know, cinema has been there 20 years and you've got comfy seats, you've got kind of good views of huge screens. Um, so it's a it's a different experience for sure. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's quite an exciting thing to do. And the idea is we're going to take it around the country, um, assuming it all goes well and we get the sponsors and what have you. But yeah, for me, putting a bit of effort and keeping that going for the second one coming up is is kind of a focus right now as well as well that's assuming you know if i get mvp status again and uh, that's gone renewals just gone in mm -hmm. so yeah fingers crossed regardless actually of that it doesn't matter I, you know i enjoy in the community it doesn't yeah that's that's not the driver and it was never was yeah never was what's a house i mean i think workplace ninjas is, is now a household name um uh, now you did the cinema one once before, right? You did it last time. Yeah. Sure. But I think that's great. The cinema. Vi I, I, I like different vibes. I, I think the tech community got to a place where it seemed kind of stale, right? Someone looking in a camera saying, my name is John Smith. I'm going to talk to you about this today. We're going to look at, I yeah. like bringing the entertainment because I think that's our yeah. audience. And I, the, yeah, the, cin right. the cinema thing was brilliant because anything that's different and people can get a better experience, they're going to remember it better. So I'm a fan yeah. of that. And I think a lot of people are too. So great job with that. I mean, that that's awesome. I hope it keeps going. Yeah, you know. so do I. I mean, we've got some good speakers coming lined up and, uh, you know, international speakers as well. So great. yeah, we just right now we're looking to kind of build that that community um, and keep, keep that going. So where that goes, who knows? But it's yeah, it's quite exciting right now. And uh, but at some point, yeah, for sure, I'd I'd like to get into more of the put myself forward in the speaker thing. And I I don't know whether that is that's kind of like a, it's on the check it's on the tick list, right? Yeah. But if I do it, I do it. If I don't, it's I'm not going to worry about it. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I I think that's the thing, right? We we want to do things that we like to do i i love every video i make and it's like as long as i feel good about it then i'm happy with it and hopefully people yeah. enjoy that i i do it because i like it and i think that's the same thing with your stuff right it, people can tell when someone's not passionate about something they're talking about and that shows yeah so it, it's really important um um i guess i don't know any final thoughts you want to talk about before we wrap up or when it comes to these conversations, 
yeah, I like talking again, going a bit deep occasionally, but, you know, on the technology. But you know what? It's, it's kind of just to kind of connect with other people, see what they're up to, give them a bit of feedback. Um, yeah, what I see is what I see in front of me from your stuff is good. So keep keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. No, I do. I'm glad this is good. This is exactly the kind of conversation I like having. I appreciate the feedback. I'm glad you came on. I mean, I think this was a great conversation. So if nothing else, you know, I mean, I enjoyed it. So I'm glad you. Yeah, me too. I appreciate you doing it. Thank you.